All right, shalom, shalom. All right, we are the Hebrew Israelites back out here another day. We prophesied the downfall of Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon, also known as the land of the north, which is America. All right, and to preach the gospel, meaning the good news to the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians who make up the 12 tribes of Israel. All right, starting off with the tribe of Judah. All right, the so called Negroes, all the way down to the tribe of Issachar, the so called Mexicans. All right, once again, this gospel is for you, this good news, all right? And what is the good news? Well, that's what we're gonna go into, all right? It's really an open form, just flowing in the spirit, all right? But once again, you know, primarily, you do the same thing week in and week out. I right? prophesy, I mean to tell you what's gonna happen before it even happens, all right? And to preach good tidings unto the meek, all right? Good tidings, once again, meaning gospel and good news unto the Lord's chosen people, all right? The 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad. So let's go ahead and start off with that, all right? All right, we're going to go to uh, the book of James, chapter 1. All right, James, chapter 1, and verse 1. It says, uh, it says, James, a servant of Yahweh, all right, who the word really calls God, and of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, all right, which these are the, uh, the names of the Heavenly Father and His Son, in the Paleo Hebrew tongue, all right? So God and Jesus, it's Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, who the word literally calls God and Jesus, okay? It says to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, all right? So that's who we're speaking to, okay? We're, spe we're speaking to the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad, that are scattered into each and every single nation up under the heavens, all right? Isaiah chapter 62, and verse 11, all right, it reads, it says, Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. All right, so he said, Behold, the Lord has proclaimed unto the end of the world. All right, meaning from the east to the west, the north to south, all right, and everything in between. He has proclaimed it to the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. All right, so we're going to go, we're going to preach the gospel to every creature, as he, as he says, right? All right, preach it to every creature. But who are we primarily looking for? Who are we primarily speaking to? Okay, the daughter of Zion, which is the children of Israel, and specifically the elect, because that's the only one that's going to take heed to this word and get delivered, all right? So let me read that again, Isaiah 62 and 11. It says... Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed it to the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. All right, because there's going to be reward for the saints. All right. When the Lord comes, he says, I'm coming to bring a sword. That sword is for two thirds of our people that are wicked. All right. And then uh, the other side of that, he's going to bring reward. He's going to, he's going to bring peace, a, a beautiful kingdom to his, to his saints, to his elect. All right, and that's what we prophesy of. We're coming to preach that word, all right, to, to, to herald the coming, the heralding of the coming of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. All right, because the Heavenly Father's not coming himself, he's sending down his son. All right, his son came the first time, his son came the first time as a man, all right, as a sacrifice for our sins, but this time he's coming as an angelic being, an angelic force to come and bring destruction upon those. But have persecuted us and to free us from the hands of our enemies. All right, and that's the gospel. Let's go ahead and get that right quick. Straight out of the New Testament in the book of Luke, the first chapter, all right? So this is Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, and I'm going to get at verse, uh, let's see. Luke chapter 1 and verse 67, all right? And the person was speaking. It says that he was filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? This is Luke 1 and 67. It says, And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord, power of Israel. All right, once again, 12 tribes of Israel, the biblical Hebrew Israelites, all right, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, according to prophecy. Blessed be the Lord, power of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. All right. 
So that's, that's, what, he, that's what he's coming. He's coming for. All right. He's came, he came the first time to redeem his people from what? From from the power of sin and from their enemies, from destruction. Okay. Because it tells you in Psalms chapter 17 and verse 13 that the wicked are the sword of the Lord. All right. He is it, his his instrument of punishment against those who commit iniquity. All right. So when you are counted righteous through the blood of Yahweh Shai, you don't have to fear the wicked. You see? Our people have been in bondage for, uh, for thousands of years because of the fear of death, because of the fear of the wicked, you see? But we don't, have, we don't have to fear that anymore because now we're covered by the blood and Lord's will, we remain covered by that blood to escape from the wrath of Yahweh Shai. So let me, matter of fact, let me get that right quick too, all right? You escape the wrath of Yahweh, Escape the wrath of the Lord through the blood, all right, that Yahweh Shai said, that he, that he sent, so like it, that he shed. All right, let's get that right quick. Romans chapter 5, and I'm going to try to stay on topic, all right, but this is Romans chapter 5 and verse uh, 8. It says, but God, okay, but God, whose name is Yahweh, commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Yahweh Shai died for us. So he gave, he gave, he shed his love upon us. He commends, he, he brings his, shed his love upon us, all right, by sending his son to die for us while we were yet sinners. It says, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. See, so we're justified by the blood of Yahweh Shai. We're counted righteous by that blood. And that's what's, that's what's going to deliver us from the wrath of the Lord that's getting ready to come upon the whole earth, okay? Going back to Luke, the first chapter, all right, Luke chapter 1 and verse 68, it says, Blessed be the Lord, power of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people by that blood. All right, the word redeemed means to buy back. Okay, we were bought, we were bought through his blood. All right, it says, And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. All right, so he said he raised up a horn. A horn is like a king or power. All right, he raised up a horn. For us, all right, a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, because Yahweh Shai is a direct physical descendant of King David, all right, the, the one that's prophesied of all throughout the prophecies, Jeremiah the twenty-third chapter, all right, Isaiah chapter eleven, all right. Continuing on, it says, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, all right. So we read earlier that he was going to proclaim to the daughter of Zion, your salvation has come. Right? How is he going to do that? Through the men of the Lord, through the prophets. Okay? That's how the Lord speaks. The Lord uses his mouthpiece, which is the prophets, to speak. All right? And we're more than happy to go out there and do the work of the Lord. And, and that's going to lead to our salvation as well. All right? Let's go ahead and get that right quick. Okay? When we, when we preach this word, first we hear the word. All right? And we believe on it. And then we go out, we go out and preach and we prophesy. All right? And that's going to lead to our salvation. That's how, that's how you show the Lord that you have faith. All right, that's how you show the Lord that you truly believe in his word. All right, this is Romans chapter 10 and verse 10. It says, it says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. All right, it tells you in Habakkuk 2 and 4 that the just shall live by faith. So with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, right? So you hear it and then after you hear it, you believe on it and what happens next? And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation all right so after you hear the word you believe it all right then you go out there and you prophesy you you you, you confess the testimony of the lord all right and that's going to lead to what that's going to lead to you uh, receiving salvation from the lord's hand that's why that's what it talks about that reward okay so that reward is with me all right and his work is before me his work is before him and that what's that work that work is he's going to put work in on these other nations all right all that have devoured us all that have destroyed us, all that put us into captivity. What did the Lord say in Jeremiah 30? All that devoured thee shall be devoured. All that preyed upon thee shall be a prey. That's the work that the Lord is coming to do. Right, he's going to set up a tabernacle of David, all right, which is going to be his chosen people all right, in rulership and the rest of these heathens going ahead first into captivity. All right, That's Amos the ninth chapter and many other chapters. But, okay, that's part of the gospel. That's part of the good news. Okay, continuing on, Salaki. Let me just read it all the way through. I don't want to... I keep, I keep uh, going into rants. Luke chapter 1 and verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, 
For he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up and horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. See that? That's what's the gospel right there, being saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. All right, who is that? You, we can go to uh, Psalms 83rd chapter. It's going to tell us all of our enemies. All right, we'll, matter of fact, we'll go there next. All right. It says, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham. All right. And, and, and who, was, who was chosen after Abraham? All right. The promise went down from Abraham to Isaac, and then it went from Isaac to Jacob. All right. It says, and Isaac shall thy seed be called. All right. Isaac gave the blessing over to Jacob. Okay. That's what the promises is for. I believe it tells you that in Romans, the uh, eighth chapter. No, Romans chapter nine, verses three and four. All right. Let me, let's, let me try, let's get that right quick. All right. So, but the Lord sent, yeah, he sent, the heavenly father sent Yahweh Shai, all right, to redeem us with his blood. And then the second coming, he's going to redeem us from the hands of our enemies so that we, we're no more going to be upon those that smote us. All right. What is this? I'm, I'm preaching, I'm preaching the Bible. Oh. Yes, so this is what is this called? That's called a menorah. Yes. And it's, but this is, this is it, it, it's, 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 it's from the, so, it's from the Israelite culture. Israelite. Right, now, yeah. now, people don't know this. People don't know this, but we actually have 12 tribes of Israel. It's not just, people, people that hear about the Jews, the Jews is just one tribe. And the people that are over there right now in the land, they're not the same people that are spoken of in the Bible. They're a whole different So people. they're, they're right now, they're Israel. This is the creation state of Israel, the land of Israel. And then there's 12 tribes in Israel right now? No, the 12 tribes are here in America, according to prophecy. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on. What is this? That's the Bible. Okay, so that's the Bible of a regular Bible? It's not the, it's it's not the Torah? Yeah, it's the Bible. Well the, well, the Torah is a part of the Bible. Well, isn't this the Torah? No, this is a menorah. <laughs> but a menorah goes with the Torah. So, and then it's the Bible? Are you, are you a Christian? Uh, yeah. Are you, are you know about Christianity? I follow you. Okay, so so Christianity is an offshoot. The New Testament is an offshoot of the Old Testament. They go hand in hand together. Know, it's the prophets right. And the apostles. Right, and the law, the Torah is where the law is found. That's the first five books of the Bible. Right. So, exactly. so, uh, so then the twelve tribes uh, that are in the here in Old Testament. Right. No, the new that are in the new. No, that are in the Old Testament, but are written in the New Testament. They can't be here in America because they have to be in Israel, but they're dead. That's not what the scripture says. You so mean to read it to you? Okay, let me see what it says. I'll read it to you. Because right. it tells you. All right, what's it say? I'll show you. So the first will go, when, when the children of Israel go back to what's known as the, their homeland, mm -hmm. it says it's going to be a miraculous deliverance that's going to overshadow the one of ancient Egypt. You've heard, you heard of Moses in the Exodus from ancient Egypt, right? Uh, yeah, uh, well, that's, yeah, but uh, that's, okay, so then you have to go, well, let's see what you're, but, okay, so then, okay, so then, um, that's Exodus, and then that's, that's before the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, and then, um, so then there's the 12 tribes, hold on, let me see, so then, um, because uh, after that is where Christ is crucified. And then, right, let's see, let me show you. I'm telling you, there's going to be a second. There's going to be a second. All right, so I'm going to read, I'm gonna read about three verses. Right, oh, okay. Okay, so, this is Jeremiah chapter 16 and verse. Jeremiah 16. Okay, yeah. Jeremiah 16 and verse 14. All right. It says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, The Lord liveth and have brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Because right now, the God of Israel, he's known as the one. That was that great okay, deliverance. Wait, wait, go, 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 go. Yeah, he carried okay. them right. But and the Lord. Right, right. Just, just, just listen. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their own land, to so their land, that I gave unto their fathers. Uh -huh. So this has not happened yet. No, 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 no. So that's what I'm saying. So right now the children of Israel are in what's known of as the land of the north. Okay, but see, uh, so they're, well, not, they're wait, not in their land right now. But the no, 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 no. But they're not in this world north neither. They're not here neither. They're, that means you got. So then, um, okay. So then, then, then the, then the, the Bible is here. 
see the Bible, and so then, then the, see the, it says in the Bible that oh, God has placed a stumbling block before you because not everybody gets into the gates of heaven. So, okay. so then, so then you're you're in the land of the Gentiles. This is the Gentiles. This is the Gentiles. I'm, I'm okay, so, you're, so, so the Israelites are going to receive their inheritance mm -hmm. in the, in until, the, in the until there's a new heaven and earth, and then then you get Amen. the melting pot. Uh, then, no, then it's chief of chiefs, and then you get to see who enter. They, it's because see, he's uh, it's new tribes. So you, you get a new language. So then, then, then you get uh, yeah, because your name's written on a stone. Because you become an angel. You, you, uh, you, you, you are a human being. Are you a human being? Yes. Yeah, so some of the things you're then saying you're are correct. You're going to become an angel. Some of the things you're saying are correct, but you got some there details. There is no other. Stuff. See, the problem is that people they argue and stuff. There is no but, other. Uh, there is nothing else. He's chief of chiefs. Ma'am, I, I understand that. But I, what I'm telling you is so, you, some, the, the children of Israel are not in their land until the Lord comes back. Yeah, exactly. Right. Except so, there so there's the, a new heaven and earth. No. Uh, and then you're going to have the, the remaining you, of God's people. Teach? All the people that okay. died and went into heaven I understand are going that. to be with the Lord. I understand that. And then the other people that go into hell, when death and Hades will go to eternity in hell. I so would, you have to, well, you can't man, be actually, right here. This, this so, this, this, this too, this too many. This, this too many. But they're not here. I mean, who's here? The children of Israel are in, are in America today. The, the biblical children of Israel are in America. But you can preach to all of the world. I am pre I'm preaching. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not stop, I'm, not, I'm not stopping anybody from hearing what I'm saying. Then you're going to be the one that gets into heaven and you're going to live for eternity. And if you don't have him in your heart, then you go to hell. And that's what, what, what's your, what's your, what, what are the What's the point that you're trying to make? Is that you, you have to have Jesus in your heart. You know the Lord's name. Well, for yeah. one, you know the Lord's name. People is Jesus. are persecuted. People are persecuted because those other people are going to go to because they, no, this okay. is like and this is the whole, those that, that's the tribe. Those, no, when it's no. Jesus, that's it's the talking about the actual biblical those descendants are, of the Israelites. Yeah, it's those, not talking about everybody in the whole world. Go, it's not talking about everybody in the whole like world. So, yeah. All right, well, ma'am, if you don't mind, I would like if he's, I could continue he's, on my lesson. The Jesus that they portray here is the one that they want to portray here because they think that you think it's. Yeah, what, see, what happened with the Jew is like why you wash the outside and the inside is ugly. And yeah, that, and if, you you don't, if you don't mind, I would, I would like to let me continue with this. Well, know, if you got the truth, then go teach. Why are you right here? You stop me from teaching clean, the Bible. You, have to clean you, 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 don't, you don't know, hey, brother, you don't know what's inside. Like, hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Well, then you're not going to make it into the gates of heaven. Ma'am, can you? You don't know what I'm preaching. You don't know what I'm preaching. You're going to have to pray God to help you. I don't need help. I'm good. I'm good. I'm doing what the Lord told me to do. I'm out here preaching the word. And you're just you know so, so please, you pray please. I pray to God please. every day. That, okay, and that's I'll wonderful. I'll put you in my path. So I'm that's letting wonderful. you know that your mouth like that, if you don't say, like, please leave me alone. People, I'm preaching the word. Other people I'm are preaching the word. That's cool. That's that's murdered. not my problem. You don't need to. I'm preaching the gospel right now. That. Please, you, please leave. You go to the heart of God. Please leave. And then you see that God please leave. and those people. Because you're being a demon those right now. The only you're being, I'm just going to get some scripture. There. Yeah. You're being a demon you'll right never, now. You'll never. The, please, please let me preach the word in peace. All right. Then, if you, if you want to come out and listen. If you want to come out and listen. That's fine. If you want to even talk about for Moses. That's fine. Then you need to look at how he said for my brother. The whole Bible. The whole Bible is good for edification. You have to go. Friend, have, okay, 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 so I just edified you. No, you didn't. You didn't uh, talk about nothing. Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the Lord, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Thank you. So, man, exactly. You give me the sacrifice well, of food. Open it again and say I'm preaching the word. Open it again and say something to me. Man, if, if you had the truth, you'd be out there preaching. Open it again and say something to me. What? what? Close it and open no, it and say something. Please, just, just go on. Well, let me I don't want to talk to you. You're distracted. You're distracted. All right, you have a good day. Thank you. You as well. I appreciate that. You as well. So take care now. Have I'm a good day. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Thank you. All right. So where was I at? You think? But that was a good, that was a good topic she wanted to. So I'm going to go into that now. All right. So we start going to the... Matter of fact, let me get this first. All right. This is Romans... Chapter 9 and verse 3. All right. It says, For I could wish that myself were accursed from the anointed, for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Okay. Now listen, listen very carefully. Verse 4. It says, Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption? 
and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Okay? So he says, my brother and my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are what? Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, okay, the, the being adopted into the Father, the uh, Heavenly Father's family, all right, pertains to the Israelites. And the glory, okay, and the glory, all right, the glory that's going to come to the elect, and the covenants, both old and new covenant, which we'll get there next, all right, and the giving of the law, all right, the giving of the law was only given to the children of Israel, all right, that is uh, Psalms 148, yeah, Psalms 148, at, down at the bottom, it says, and the service of God, so only the Israelites can serve the Most High, all right, and the promises, the promise of what? We just read. We just read the promises, Luke chapter 1 and verse 6, 8. We'll go there next, and then I'll go ahead and get the New Covenant. We're going to read in the Old Testament and the New Testament exactly who the New Covenant is referring to, because she said, she said, well, there's people that are persecuted and this and that, anybody who believes in Jesus, all right, this and that. Is going to make it into the kingdom. That's not what the scriptures say. And second of all, the Lord got in the trick bag because the Lord's name is not Jesus. The Lord's name is Yahweh Shai. All right. But once again, we're, we're going to all that. We're going to all that. She gave me some. I was just flowing in the spirit, but hey, you know, she gave me she gave me some good stuff to go into now. So this is uh, let's see, let's let's, let's go and read about the, the the old covenant. I mean, that's like it, not the old covenant, the new covenant that's in the Old Testament. Okay, because one thing that people don't understand is that. You think that the New Testament contradicts the Old Testament, and it doesn't, all right? The Old Testament and the New Testament go hand in hand. Everything that's in the New Testament is being, is laying back, and it's being, it's being, uh, uh, it's referencing stuff that's in the Old Testament, all right? So this is the new covenant that everybody thinks that they're under, all right, which really is not going to happen until the Lord comes. We're going to, we're going to read about that, though. All right, this is, uh, let's see, Jeremiah chapter 31, all right? Jeremiah chapter 31, but hey, hey man, it's demons out here. It's straight up, that's what it is. Somebody coming, they want to interrupt the preaching of the gospel. What spirit are they coming in? If you come in the spirit of the Lord, what spirit are they coming in? But this is the new covenant right here, according to the Bible, written in the Old Testament. Then we'll get it in the New Testament as well. This is Jeremiah chapter 31, <clears throat> and verse 31, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So who is a new covenant for? It just told you right there. The house of Israel and the house of Judah. All right, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Okay? Which make up the 12 tribes of Israel. That's who the new covenant is for. You got a lot of people in the world, you know, they, they, they so-called believe in Jesus, right? But the Lord said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, they don't keep the commandments of the Lord. That's, let me, let's get that right quick too. That's, that's uh, let's see. First John, the second chapter. Let's go there. All right. A lot of people say they believe, but it's all lip service. As a matter of fact, I, I got a scripture. To, uh, I got a precept I want to get. Titus chapter one and verse sixteen. It says they profess that they know the Most High, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work a reprobate. All right. And that's the vast majority of people in the world, man. Unto every good work reprobate. The Lord said, "If you love me," He said in uh, Saint John the twenty-first chapter, "If you love me." feed my sheep if you love me keep my commandments but christians that are calling on, the, on, on a false name the pagan name jesus because the letter j wasn't invented in 1524 all right if you worship uh jesus you worship serapis christus that's where it goes back to all right which is really baal okay and, and how do you know that because how do you how do we know that you don't know the true god of the bible it's in your words it's in your action you say that you believe in the lord but you don't do nothing that he says you teach against his commandments all right, you teach that we you can celebrate the customs of the heathens. You can celebrate Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving. All right, and you can you can break the dietary laws. When in Isaiah 66 it says that he's gonna uh, he's gonna destroy those that that break the dietary laws with fire and with sword. So you don't know the Lord, okay? You know a pagan idol that that was given to you by the Roman Catholic Church. All right, by this beast system and its false prophet. That's that's the that's that's what you know. You don't know the, you don't know the God of the Bible, man. That's why. You go around telling everybody that God is all love. But he's not. He's perfect balance, man. All right? God, yeah, he, he is love, but he's also wrath. He's also vengeance. He's justice. All right? But let, let's get this right quick. Because the people of the world, they don't know the Lord, man. And it tells you in St. John 14, 
that the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. The world can't receive the truth. All right. Very few are going to receive the truth. All right. I, I didn't even really get a chance. She kept over over talking to me. So I said, look, if you don't want to listen, just go, because I'm not I'm not here to be taught by someone that doesn't know the Bible. If you knew the Bible, why aren't you out there teaching? And nothing to it tells you that a woman is supposed to keep silence in the church. All right. A woman is supposed to be quiet, meek. You're not supposed to be out here trying trying to debate with people and all that. That's not your place. All right. It just is what it is. Completely out of order, man. All right. This is uh. Let's get this. First John chapter uh, two. All right. First John chapter two. And let's see. First John chapter two and verse three. It says, "And hereby we do know that we know Him." All right. Who is this Him? And speaking of, it's speaking of Yahweh Shai. All right. A Messiah. What's up, man? Shalom. Warm. It says, and hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, right? He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. It says, he that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. All right? So if you, if you say you love the Lord, you know the Lord, you're supposed to keep his commandments and walk as he walked. Now, it's not it's, it's obvious we're not going to walk perfectly because we're in a sinful flesh. All right. And it, when the Lord comes, it tells you in Philippians uh, 3 and 21, I believe, uh, down at the bottom somewhere, Philippians, the, uh, I think it's Philippians, the second chapter, the third chapter. It tells you that we're going to be changed out of this vile flesh. All right. So right now we're in the wicked, sinful flesh. So we can't we can't walk perfectly. But she, she got tripped up because she's a Christian. And she saw this. She said, isn't this Jewish? This is this is from the Israelite custom. It's the Israelite culture, the menorah. All right. And same with the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. It's for the Israelites. But see, she, she doesn't get that. She got tripped up. And really what it is, she started to get offended because she knew that where I was going. She probably knows who the Hebrew Israelites are. She probably knows that I was getting ready to go into how the, uh, the Lord is coming back for the children of Israel, which we read. The new covenant is for the children of Israel. All right. But let's let's go back to that. Okay, these people they don't they don't know the Lord, man. They don't know the God of the Bible. All right, it's all lip service. All right, they they, pro they profess to know Him with their lips, but unto every good work they're reprobates. We just read that Titus one and sixteen. The new covenant is for the children of Israel. Jeremiah thirty one and thirty one. It says, "Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah." All right, the house of Judah, the so called Negroes, Caribbeans, all right, the, the so called black tribes, and the house of Israel, the Northern Kingdom. The so-called Latino and Native American Indian tribes. Okay? That's who the new covenant is for. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in that day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people, all right? So with the new covenant, he says, I will put the law in their inward parts. The, the, the people of the world, do they follow the laws of the Bible? No, all right? You go into the church, they're gonna tell you that the law is done away with. They're gonna tell you, they're gonna tell you that, that, that Jesus, who they call, all right, which his real name is Yahweh Shai, and we're gonna get that later too. They're gonna tell you that Jesus died so that the law will be done away with, you can do whatever you wanna do. And look what that's led to. It's, it's led to nothing but pure, chaos on this earth. As a matter of fact, let's gonna see let's see the end result of that according to the Bible. All right? Isaiah the 24th chapter. Let's see let's see what's gonna happen because the people in the world have have or not in the world, Israelites really, that's what it's all about, have forsaken the law of the Lord, following behind Baal, following behind white Jesus. Okay? Let's see what's gonna happen. Isaiah the 24th chapter. Isaiah chapter 24 and verse 3. It says, the land shall be utterly empty and utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. So he says, I'm going to utterly empty and spoil the land. Destruction. I'm coming to bring a sword. Why is he going to do that? It says, the earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. So this, this land is polluted. It's defiled. All right. Because they have transgressed the laws. Change the ordinance. They tell you, oh, you don't need to follow the laws anymore. That's done away with. God came so we could do whatever we want. Everything, 
Everything is considered clean now. Yeah, go ahead and buy whatever you want. Yeah, you good. Right. Do whatever yeah. you want to do. Go ahead right. Buy whatever you need. Yeah. You see? No, that's, that's not what the scriptures say. All right. This is why he's going to burn this place up. Because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant, therefore have the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. You see that? The inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. Why? Because they transgressed the law, they changed the ordinances, and broken the everlasting covenant with the heavenly father Yahweh. So he's got to bring that recompense. He's got to bring that judgment. He's not all love. And the fact that you think that, you don't know the God of the Bible. And how do we know? Because your works. All right? Matter of fact, let's get that right quick. And then we're going to get that new, uh, we're going to get the new covenant in the New Testament. I just read it to you in the Old Testament, Jeremiah 31. We're going to get it in the New Testament too. But let's go to uh, the book of James chapter 2. All right? And we're going we're gonna to read. All right? We're going to see what the Lord says about, see, once again, you, uh, you, see what she said, she said, all you got to do is believe in Jesus. Well, how do you believe? All right? Believing is an action. All right? And we'll get that, we'll get that too. Man, it's, it's so much meat off that little conversation. You just missed it, man. This lady came up. <laughs> oh, man. Woo! Man, she gave me so much meat to speak on, man. All right, this is Moab. No, nah, she's an Edomite. Edom? Yeah, she was, she was an Edomite for sure. Yeah, she, I didn't even get, I, she, she came up just to mock, scoff, you know, interrupt the gospel being preached, and it's all good. All right, this is James chapter 2. Trust the bull of life, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's Trust it. My friend, but... Right, that's all it is. And she said, she said, why aren't you preaching to everybody? I said, am I stopping people and saying, oh, you can't hear this? This ain't for you. You're a so-called white man. I'm not doing that because that's another thing. See, you got a lot of people, you don't you don't really understand the truth. All right? You can be an Israelite and come looking like any nation. It tells you in Revelation 7 and 9, it says that they're going to come from all nations, all tongues, all kindreds. All right? But at the end of the day, he said what? But the two children. Right, but the two children, which are still going to be Israelites. All right? You go into that word uh, kindreds. The Greek word is phule. All right? Which means all those that descend from one of the 12 tribes of Israel. But they can look like anybody. All right, you can have Israelites in Japan that look Japanese. You see, not every Israelite is going to look like a so-called Negro, Latino, Native American Indian. So I'm not going to tell people you can't hear the gospel because you look like another nation. I'm not going to do that. Because you are another nation. Right. I'm going to preach it to you. And if you're not, if you're not a Jake, then you're going to fight. You're going to squirm. You're going to reject it. And that's okay. Just hey, I'm not here to argue. I'm not here we're to debate. We're Just Jake's. move along. You're a Jake. I'm a Jake. Right. We're exactly. Jake's. Right. Right. Come on. Come on. Done. This is James chapter 2. All right. James chapter 2 and verse, uh, and she said, all you got to do is believe in the Lord and you're good. This is James chapter 2, and I'm going to start at verse uh, 17. It says, even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Right? So if you, if you, if you, you say you got faith, but what did the Lord say? Direct commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's James the 14, uh, John the 14th chapter. If you love me, feed my sheep. That's John, the 21st chapter. Those are, those are what he wants you to do. We read it earlier, Romans 10 and 10. You believe the word, and then you go out and preach unto salvation. Right? That's, that's, that's what he wants you to do. That's the works of the saints. James chapter 2, let's get it again. James 2 and 17. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without my works. Without thy works, Salakia. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You see? Your faith is shown by the works that you do. You can say, oh, I believe in the Lord, but you're selling drugs, you're killing people. <laughs> you're doing drugs. Right. I, mean, I, I told you earlier, I wasn't in the truth. That's why I didn't want to Hey, well, you know what? Hey, look, check this out, man. Look, I got, I got a scripture for you. I got to keep the truth, bro. I got to keep the hey, truth. Hey, but you... I was not in the truth. I felt false, but to be honest, you're in the truth. Now. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. The Lord's not going to let you preach if you don't... Because in, in order to preach, you have to be sent, and you got to have the Holy Spirit. But this is how you get cleaned up. Let me read that to you, all right? Because you coming out here is a good thing. Even though you said, I'm not going to come, that's all right. Okay, you still showed up, and that's because the Lord sent you here. Let me read something to you, all right? This is St. John, and we're going to go back to James, the second chapter. All right, for you, for you are those who are going to watch and listen and say, well, I know I'm not living right, so I, I don't even want to show up, all right? Don't have that mindset, because this is how you're cleansed, all right? This word is what cleans you up, by hearing the word, all right, and then you got to pray for that gift of faith and that Holy Spirit to cleanse you up. This is uh, St. John, St. John chapter 15 and verse 3. It says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. See that? So the Lord, he said, I'm going to clean you up through the word 
you hear the word, it enters into your heart and it's going to quicken you. All right. Lord's will. Let's, let's get that. This word right here, this, this is the spirit and it's life. This is Saint, this is Saint John. It's all good, brother. Don't even, don't even worry about it, man. That's what we out here for. You're preaching the gospel, man. The bind of the brokenhearted. Obviously, you hurting, brother. It's all good. That's what we're here for. This word right here is what's going to quicken you. It's all good, man. All right. I'll see. <laughs> it's all good, man. Hey, the Lord said, you are now clean through the word which I speak unto you. This is St. John chapter 6 and verse 63. It says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. So, you know, you may be weak in the flesh. Hey, if you have a desire to do what's right, you pray to the Lord and he'll quicken you. It's the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing, right? It says, the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life. See that? So, so these words that we speak unto you, they are spirit in their life. So you just got to come keep hearing it. Eventually, if you, if you dedicate yourself, you know, you pray to the Lord to put the right spirit on, you dedicate yourself, these words are going to pierce through and it's going to clean you up. Right, get that wickedness out. You think, you think that any of the men of the Lord were perfect? Hell no, man. You know what the scriptures say? I, I, Isaiah 64 and 6, you know what it says, brother? It says that our righteousness, yeah. It says, our righteousness is as filthy rags before the Lord. All right, even though I'm out here preaching, if I had to go off my own merit, I would be in a lake of fire, brother. You understand that? My righteousness is as filthy rags. I'm not perfect, all right? But it, it, the Lord, he sees that it's about being sincere. You see? Even, let's, let's get, a, let's get an uh, excerpt from Paul. All right, let's see what Paul said. Because Paul was an anointed man. The Lord came to him himself and said, Saul, Saul, why thou persecutest me? He, as a matter of fact, let's get this right quick. All right, I got a lot of scriptures for you, man. All right, this Lord's will is uplift your spirit. We, we can get some of that too, but I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm stay on topic because, you know, hey, the Lord the Lord, the Lord going to move the way he wants to. All right? Yep, this is, this is uh, just soak it up, man. That's all you got to do. This is 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 11. It says, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. So he says, he says, I, I thank the Lord that he counted me faithful and put me into the ministry. Now listen up, check this out. It says, it says, who was who was before a blasphemer? So he was a liar, he blasphemed, and a persecutor, he persecuted the church. Saul. Yeah, Paul, yeah. His name was yeah, Saul, whose name was changed to Paul. In the New Testament. Not not King Saul, but Paul. When, before Paul used to be his, his name was Saul before. And the Lord gave him a new name. Because remember, whenever the Lord gives a, makes a covenant with you, he gives you a new name. Yeah, I used to be Joseph. My, now my name is Yahweh Can you see? Jacob's name was changed to what? Israel. Abram was changed to Abraham. Sarai was changed to Sarah. You see? So. Uh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know that one. But hey, I got to read. But yeah. You see? So, so he said, this is what Paul said. He said, look. He said, who was it before? A blasphemer. So he, he blasphemed a persecutor. He got Stephen killed. He persecuted the church, right? And injurious, violent. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception that the anointed Yahweh Shai came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. See that? He said, the Lord came to save sinners of whom I am chief. He said, I was the worst of the worst. I was a flat out nigga. I was a gangster, I was a thug, I was a cholo. Whatever you want to call it, you see? <laughs> Straight up. But he said, but the Lord, all right, he knew that I was weak in the flesh and he poured his spirit upon me. You see that? And he counted me righteous and worthy to be a bearer of this gospel. You see that? Now I got, I got some more for you, man. It, it don't stop there. Hey, we're going to keep rolling. Yeah, we're going to keep rolling. Check this out. I went from a split to an issue card. Right, right, exactly. Right. That's what I'm saying. He, 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 he gave us this ministry, man, so just stick with it. Don't don't get discouraged because you're not perfect, brother. All right? You know, ask the Lord to clean you up. Be sincere. And pray. For, if you don't fear the Lord enough to, to overcome your sin, pray for more fear. You see? The fear of the Lord, that's what's going to get you to turn away from wickedness, brother. All right, hey, check this out. This is Galatians, the third chapter. Check this out. It's going to tell you. Hey, shalom, shalom. Con, con. Deus bendiga. De, uh, T bendiga. God bless you. Con, con. Yep. So I, I speak a little Espanol, man. You know. Hey, that's why I need I need some of y'all uh, 
y'all Spanish brothers, man, to come and come preach with me because you know there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, Jakes out here, right? That's what I'm saying. So, hey, then that's for you. You speak Spanish? Hey, so, you're right, right, con. So, so hey, keep learning, man. The Lord will clean you up. Lord's will. All right, check this out. This is how you get the Holy Spirit. It didn't come because you're a perfect, righteous man for any of us. All right, it's gonna come because the Lord imparts it on you out of His grace and mercy. This is Galatians chapter three and verse one. It says, O foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Yahweh Shai have been evidently set forth and crucified among you. So he's saying, Who has put a spell on you that now you think that you could that you're gonna be righteous by the law? You see? And that's that's what that was the problem in this church. They 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 were kind of pushing the Yahweh Shai to the side and saying, nah, nah, we we got this according to the law. We're gonna, you know what I'm saying, we're gonna get this righteousness according to the law, right? Look at this, it says. Galatians 3 and 2. This only would I learn of you, received you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. He said, did you receive the Holy Spirit by doing, by being righteous in the law or did you receive it by hearing? You see that? The hearing of the word is what's going to put the Holy Spirit on you. Not by being a perfect person in the law. It's not possible. You see? Now, we read that earlier. John 15 and 3. You are now cleansed by the word which I speak unto you. So look, even though you're not perfect, keep coming, keep hearing the word, and pray the Lord, pray in sincerity and the truth, that the Lord cleans you up, all right? And he, he blesses you and, and puts you in this ministry, man. God, yeah. Yeah, right. Shalom meaning peace, right? Yes, 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 right, exactly. Right, right. So, you know, don't don't get distressed, right, just because you're not perfect, man. Nobody is. I'm going to get one more scripture on that, and I'm going to go back to what I was speaking on, all right? Yeah, this one's specifically for you. The Lord, man's goals are the Lord, man. So you came by here a second time because the Lord wants you to be here to hear the word. That's it. That's all it is, man. All right. So, you know, this is Romans chapter 7. All right. Romans chapter 7 and verse, um, let's see. Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. It says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal and sold under sin. So we said we know the law is spiritual. We, we just read that. This, this word is spirit and it is truth. The, the flesh part from nothing, but it's the spirit that quickens it. And the spirit comes from the hearing of this word. All right. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal and sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. That's a tough saying. I'm going to say it again. All right. Listen closely. It says, for that which I do, I allow not. He says, the things that I do, I really don't want to do them. All right? Yep. For what I would, that I do not. For what my heart wants to do, I don't do it. I want to, I want to be righteous, but somehow I always fall short. That's what he's saying here, right? He says, listen to this. It says, it says that, I, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. He says, the things that I hate, which is sin, all right, I end up doing them because I'm not perfect. You see? Now listen to this. It says, if then I do that which I would not, I can sense it to the law that it is good. So if I go off, if I make a mistake, I sin, right? And in my heart, I say, damn, I shouldn't have did that, man. Why? That's because I understand that I'm doing wrong. And it's my spirit that wants to do right, but we're in the wicked, sinful flesh. You see? Your spirit wants to do right. You delight in the law after the inward man, but sometimes you fall short because you're in wicked flesh. You see what I'm saying? It's changed. Right. Continue on. I'll check this out. It says, if then, if then I do that which I would not, I can sense it to the law. That it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. So it's not it's not even you. It's your wicked. It's your flesh. Your flesh is going to go off because we we're in chains of darkness, man. This is wicked flesh right here. You see? It's a carnal, it's a carnal. Right. This is carnal. Our spirit wants to do right, but we're going to go off because we're in the flesh. You see that? Now check this out. It says. It says. Uh. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know. That in me, that in speaking of the flesh, dwelleth no good thing. In my flesh, there's no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. So he says, I know that in my flesh there's nothing good. And, the, and what I really desire to do, which is be perfect, I don't know how to do it. Because I, how do I, I don't know how to overcome the flesh. You see? Because the only way you can overcome it is through the spirit. Right. Now continuing on, it says, For the good that I would... I not, but the evil which I would not, I do it. I end up doing it. The evil that I don't want to do, I still end up doing it because I'm weak. 
all right? This is this is the ultimate humility right here, realizing that, yeah, we're, we're, we, we sin, all right? We make mistakes, you see? But it's, you got that's, that's where that faith comes in, because eventually what's gonna happen is this, man. You keep, you, keep, you keep coming and hear the word, the Lord, and you dedicate yourself to just doing the best that you can. The Lord's gonna see that, he's gonna reward you, and he's gonna put the spirit on you to overcome the flesh. I used to be, I used to do all kind of wicked shit, man. All right, let's just keep it in the park. All of us did, man. Our righteousness is filthy rags. We were all niggas, man. We was all gangsters and thugs and cholos. Uh, you know, women being whores and all that kind of stuff. You see? But what happened when the Lord poured that spirit upon you? You heard the gospel. You believed that spirit was on you. Boom. Now you you, you cleaned up, and it's a it's a process. It's sanctification. It's not. You're not just gonna wake up one day, you hear the word, and all of a sudden, oh, I'm perfect now, I don't sin no more. It ain't like that, all right? Some brothers are getting cleansed up faster than others, yes, but we all are work in progress. And I'm gonna read you something next after this too, continuing on, Romans 7, and uh, Romans 7 and verse, uh, let's see, verse 21. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, meaning in your flesh. So I delight to do what's right after, after the after the uh, laws of God. I want to do what's right after my spirit, but my flesh is weak. Right. It says, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my flesh. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Yahweh Shai and Mashiach, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So with my mind, I, I serve God, but in my flesh, I make mistakes. That's all he's saying. And look, check this out. I got some more for you. We're going to keep going, man, because this is important. This is true. This is Psalms 32. All right. This is Psalms chapter 32 and verse 2. All right. And it reads, it says, and all of the elect that make it, they're not going to make it because of their own righteousness. They're going to make it because of this. Psalms 32 and 2. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, in whose spirit there is no guile. It didn't say in his flesh. It said in his spirit there is no guile. In his spirit, he did everything he could to the best of his ability to serve the Lord. And the Lord's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna uh, let go and pardon his iniquity. You see that? So this is what you ought to pray right here. Psalms chapter 16. Listen to this. This is, this is the prayer. Pray this every single night. All right. First, pray for the Rakhakwadash, the Holy Spirit. Right? I used to pray every night. I used to say, I used to say, Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, fill me with the Holy Spirit, engulf me with the Holy Spirit. I'm weak. All right. I used to pray that every night, man. Eventually, my prayers were answered. Check this out. All right. This is Psalm chapter 16. Psalm chapter 16 and verse. Uh, let's see. Hang on. It's like you're praying with me. Oh, you know, Psalm 19. My bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I got so many scriptures in my mind, yo. All right, Psalm chapter 19 and verse 12, it says, Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Pray, I mean, pray for the Lord to cleanse you up, right? Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. That means sin that you do willingly. He says, please, re you know, hold me back from doing sin willingly, meaning clean up all that guile that's in my spirit. If I know I'm doing wickedness, give me the power to fight that so I don't do it no more, right? It says, let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Pray that every day. You might want to write that in your phone, man. Absolutely. Tell me that again. Yep, I'll read it again. Psalm chapter 19 and verse 12. Actually, I'll just read uh, 13. Psalm 19, 13, and 14. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. That's what you got to pray every night. Pray that, man. All right, and look, the Lord is going to do that for his elect. Okay, he's going he's to cast your sins into the sea to be forgotten. Let's get that right quick, and then I'm going to move on to the, to the next topic, all right? You want Jeremiah 19? Uh, no, no, I'm going to go to um, uh, Hebrews 10th chapter. I'm, I was speaking of the new covenant. I'm going to go back into you that. Hopefully elect? I'm the hopefully elect. You are the hopefully elect? That's right, yeah. I am the hopefully elect. That's right, that's right. 
Me, we're of the hopeful elect, man. All right, this is uh, Micah chapter 7. That's what that, that's the key word, and that is what keeps my faith going every day to the right. Because because the, exactly, we're not of the we don't know we're not of the elect yet. But Lord's will we be at a number that makes it. All right. So we call ourselves the hopefully elect. This is uh, Micah chapter three. All right. Hang on one second. So having a trouble finding the book, but I mean it's not Micah, not not, not uh, chapter three. Micah seven. Excuse me. All right. Here it is. Got it. So this is Micah chapter seven. Let's see what it says. Micah chapter seven. And verse, uh, verse 18, it says, Who is a God like unto thee that pardons iniquity and passes by the transgression of the remnant of his, of his heritage? That's us. It says, He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion on us. He will subdue our iniquities. Subdue means to take hold. He's going to grab them. He's going he's gonna to take charge, man. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. See that? So even though you may have sinned in the past and maybe you're still doing sins, once again, man, pray to the Lord for that spirit on you. And that look, that's the only reason why this Lord, this world is not destroyed yet. Because the Lord said, He told the angels, He said, Destroy not the earth nor the sea until I have sealed the servants of, of my God on their forehead. forehead. Right. The number thereof. Right, so you know that scripture, right? Yes, sir. So that's the reason why the earth has not been destroyed. Because the Lord is long suffering. He's patient with us. Alright? So right, as long as long as you're still breathing, as long as Jacob's trouble has not happened yet, you still have a chance to repent. You got a chance to repent, but turn back to the Lord, man. But you just gotta be sincere. That's what it's all about, you see? Alright, we're gonna get that too. Second Peter the third chapter. Alright, this is the mercy of the Lord, man. Alright, you're still alive, you're still breathing. That means that you can you can get right, all right. If the, you know, but it's all up to the Lord, man. It's all up to the Lord. This is uh, Second Peter chapter three. Bear with me. Let, me. let me get this right away. And then, like I said, I got I got to move on to the next topic. You know? All right. Thank you, brother. And then Thank after you. this, I gotta get I gotta go to that next topic I was gonna get. Love seeing this, brother. Oh yeah, man. This ain't none ain't none greater than uh than, than being out here, you know, preaching His word and Lord's will. You know, you get you get yourself in, in, in the right in the right spot with the Lord, and you know He'll put the Spirit on you to come out here and preach too. All right, because there's a lot. You know, we need more laborers, man. All right, yeah, the gospel must be preached. out here and showing up. There's, there's truth to the word. Yeah, eventually, eventually, yeah, and eventually, you know, the Lord wants you to keep feed His sheep. That's one of the commandments, right? You keep the commandments. You got to keep the covenant. Yeah, this is Second Peter chapter three. All right, Second Peter chapter three and verse nine. It says, "But the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. His promise is going to destroy this earth." And he's going to deliver his elect. All right. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. See that? So he don't want you to die, man. Because I'm going to be straight up with you. I got to tell you the 100% truth according to the Bible. You don't get right, the Lord's going to kill you eventually. So you have to, that's why, that's where that fear of the Lord comes in. That's why, you know, I do this also because I, I love the Lord and I want to keep his commandments and, and feed his sheep, but at the same time, I'm praying and hoping for the mercy of the Lord. I don't want to. I don't want to die, man. I don't want to die with the people of the world. See, so I do my best to do what's pleasing unto the Lord. All right, and and you got to take that mindset, bro. You got to understand. Look, you hopefully they live forever. Yeah, exactly. The hopeful <laughs> elect that become the elect will obtain eternal life. Yeah. You know, whatever you you got to understand, bro. You got to understand what's at stake. Whatever you're going through, exactly. whatever sins that you're bound to, bro. You got to understand what's at stake, man. The kingdom, eternal life, all the desires of your heart, everything you could ever wish for. When you were a kid, did you have dreams? You, you know them dreams that you had? You was like, wow, I wish real life was like this. It'd be so amazing, right? The Lord is going to do that for us, man. You see? The Lord is going to do that for us, bro. But you got to get past all the sins of, of this world. You got to get past the pollution of this world, man. All right? See, this kingdom, this ain't, this, this world, this ain't shit, yo. It's keeping a buck with you, man. This world is, is folly, it's foolishness, it's nonsense, and it's going to be destroyed. All right? Whatever, whatever you're going through, it's not worth losing out on the kingdom, man. You see? It's not worth, it's not worth losing out on being one of the elect. You got to have that mindset. So no matter what it is, like, bro, you, you don't think that I, I, everybody gets tempted, bro. Everybody gets tempted. If you smoke, you got every time you roll that blunt, you got to be looking at that shit like, yo, like, I could lose out on being crowned from the Lord. I could lose out. On, on inheriting the kingdom over this fucking blunt. Are you serious? Come on, man. You gotta be. You gotta be for real. You gotta. Matter of fact, let's get a scripture, bro. Let's get a scripture. You gotta be. That's how you gotta think, man. That's how you gotta think, bro. Like, like, like. Look at all that's at stake, my man. 
Like, bro, we live in this society. We at the bottom, man. We oppressed, fucking homeless out here. You know what I'm saying? Shit is tough. This life is hard, man. We get our asses kicked out here, yo. Minimum wage fucking jobs. This ain't it, yo. This is not our rest. But the Lord said we got something greater coming. But if you don't get right, you're not going to be a part of that. You right. see? You got to get, right. get right, man. You got to think. Every time you sin, you got to realize what's at stake, brother. Let's get this right quick. This is uh, the book of Sirach, also known as uh, Ecclesiasticus and the Apocrypha, chapter 17. Listen to this, bro. You got to, this, it tells you. Let's get this. Sirach 17 and verse, um, let's see. Written by King Solomon, correct? 23. Nah, it was written by uh, a man a man named Joshua. Joshua. Or Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, actually. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because that name, that name Yahweh Shai is actually a very common name. Okay. But we, we don't, instead of saying Yahweh Shai, we'll call him Joshua to make that differentiation. Because Yahweh Shai is the Savior. But so, Joshua and Yahweh Shai actually have the same name. So, so Yahweh Shai, so the Savior was Joshua? No. Oh, was the, the, savior, the Savior is Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus. Yes. But what I'm saying is that Yahweh, in the, in the Hebrew, Joshua and Yahweh Shai is the same name. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. But we say, when we talk about somebody that's not the Savior, we call him Joshua instead to make that differentiation. So we know, so you know who we're talking about. Okay. When we're talking about the Savior, we're going to say Yahweh Shai. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, but All when right. you're speaking about word, you talk about Joshua. Right, so this book was actually written by uh, uh, the son of Sirach, whose name was Joshua, okay. All right, or Yahweh Shai. But we want to say Joshua so you know the difference, okay? But well, this is Sirach chapter 17. And verse uh, 23, afterward he will rise up and reward them and render their recompense upon their heads. But unto them that repent, he granted them return and comforted them, comforted those that failed in patience. So he's going to comfort those that fail in patience. Check this out. But it says, return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. That's directions right there. That's exactly what to do. Return unto the Lord, forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face. And it didn't say be perfect. It said offend less. So do less. Maybe maybe you got a problem smoking weed. You smoke every day. Maybe black and mild, bro. Black and mild. Black and mild, right. I'm going to keep it a buck, bro. Hey, you keep black it a buck. Good gosh, man. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. It's a hard habit, right? So maybe you smoke a black and mild every day. Cut it down to every couple of days. And then maybe once a week. Maybe once a month. You got to wean yourself off of it, man. All right, eventually you're going to get to a point where you're going to get to this right here. Okay, so Rock 17 and verse 26. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity, for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health, and then hate thou abomination vehemently. You got to hate your sin. You got to look at it like, oh, this is nasty. This is, uh, man, another black eye. I'm, I'm good, y'all. I'm straight, man. I'm done with that. You put it away. You see? You put it away. That's how you got to think, man. All right? Matter of fact, I better pick up scripture. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's another thing, too. See? Bro, your whole life got to be about these scriptures, man. All right? The Lord said, give yourself wholly to these scriptures. So if you're not, this is not a part-time thing. The, the, those that are of the hopeful elect, it said that the word will not depart out of their mouth. They're going to be preaching, prophesying, studying day in and day out. This is not a just, like I said, you know I'm out here on the weekend, but you can't just be out here on the weekend and be a part-time Israelite. You got to be 100% in this thing, man. When I'm, when I'm not here preaching to you, you got to be reading for yourself. You got to be studying. And you got my number. You can hit me up and be like, hey, brother, what does this mean? What does that mean? I'm all the road. That's what my job is. I'm going to be here to teach you the word, man. All right? By the power and spirit of how Bashan Yahweh shot. But you, but I can't, I can lead you to water, but I can't make you drink. You see? You got you to decide for yourself. You know what? I want that living water. You see? You got to decide that for yourself, man. And you got to be, you got to be in these scriptures, bro. What do you think I'm doing when I'm not out here, man? Reading, studying. Sharpening. That sharpen my sword, exhortations. Just truth. Just in the truth, 100 percent That's it, bro. Monday, this is not, this is a this is a 25-8. 366 days a year, man. Ain't no they ain't take no breaks. You see? And you gotta have that mindset, bro. That's the only way you're gonna stay strong against the flesh, bro. Because remember, the word, this word that I speak unto you, this is spirit, and this is life. You want more of the spirit, the spirit is what's gonna get you to uh, turn away from sin. You want more of the spirit, you gotta be in this word right here, bro. And it's scary. It's yeah. scary, bro. It's, it's hard. Truth. I know. It's hard. No. Yeah, no, it's hard. The, the, the love of the, the, the power of the most high is scary. Right. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's what I'm talking And that's the rest of our mindset. You got to fear the Lord. Matter of fact, let's get this one quick, bro. All right? You got to fear the Lord. Because you got to understand, bro. See, if you're in the world, they don't fear the Lord, bro. They, they, don't, they don't understand the Lord. He would, he would delete you, bro, in a terrible way. But look, look, look. I'm, I'm, in my eyes, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm out here 
I'm out here feeding the sheep, and I'm keeping the commandments to the best of my ability. Bro, the Lord has had me have a toothache for over a month. That shit hurts, bro. I can't sleep at night. The Lord is still putting hell on me. But you know what? I'm like, the Wadi Yahabash, I'm thankful for it because it tells you that he that has suffered in the, in the flesh has ceased from sin. Every time my tooth starts hurting, I think to myself, man, the Lord is he's purging out my iniquity. And you know what it does? It reminds me of the straight hell the Lord could put me on, bro. This is a fucking toothache. Can you imagine the Lord sent Esau after you and he plucking your teeth out with pliers? That's the kind of hell the Lord could do, man. The Lord can, he can send the wicked to torture you, bro. The only protection that you have from death, from destruction, from the wicked, is Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, man. That's it, that's the only protection that you got, bro. So not only do you gotta think about what's at stake, which is the kingdom, a crown from the Lord's hand, but you also gotta think about the pure hell that's about to come on the earth, bro. Do you wanna be a part of that? Bro, the Lord is about to starve these niggas out, man. You see? Bro, it's about, the Lord said I'm bringing the sword, famine, death, and destruction but my my bro to my people my saints my prophets my servants shall no harm come to them bro I deliver. i'm gonna deliver them man you see you gotta think about what's at stake bro bro a, a black a black and mild can burn you in hell a black and mild is not worth you being deleted by the lord bro it's not okay you got you got to think about that man 110 percent. i'm checking the time all right but Check this out, bro. This is the mindset I'm in, bro. I'm in this mindset every day, man. And you got to adopt this mindset. This is Psalms chapter 119. Check this out. In verse uh, 120. It's all right? True. It's true. It says, my flesh trembleth. You know what trembleth mean? Yeah. Woo, shaking. Yeah. Lord, please don't, please don't do me dirty. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee. And I am afraid of thy judgments, yo. I am afraid of thy judgments, bro. Let me tell you a story, man. There was a guy... And down in Mississippi, bro, I did a video on him, man. This dude, I don't know what he was doing. Maybe he was selling drugs or something. The dude had a fancy car. He had a Tesla. Bro, the Lord set it up to where that Tesla set on fire, and he got locked inside, burnt alive, bro. You can hear him screaming in the video. Ah! Bro. Come on. Yes, this happened, man. This happened. The Lord burnt that nigga to a crisp. That's why, that's why it's, it's, it's wisdom to fear the Lord, bro. That's wisdom right there. For fear, for, uh, uh, the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. That's right. You want, you want me to get that? Yeah. You want you wanted some Job. I'm going I'm to get that Job for you, man. Let's get it, bro. Let's get it, man. This ain't, a, you know, this ain't a game, man. This ain't a game. You see? It's the scriptures right here. Call a lawyer. How about some y'all shy? Job 28 and 28. Let's get it. Shalom. Yeah, you got it. You had it, though. Let's get it, man. You quoted it. I'm going to read it. Job chapter 28 and verse 28. Shalom. And unto man he said, Behold. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Wait, bro, did you start that from the beginning again? Yep, let's get it, all right? Yeah. Job 28, 28. Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. The fear of the Lord is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. That's what you got. That's what you want right there. That's, that's going to keep you alive, bro. It's going to keep you alive. Let's get a, let's get a few more scriptures. Man, hey, I, I was I was going into uh, the new the new covenant, man. But the new covenant, uh, uh, this is this is fire right here, man. For if one of you were to touch the hair upon the head of a little one, it would be better for you to cat to tie a millstone around right. your neck and cast yourself into the sea. Right, and that and that's straight up. That is straight up. That's straight that's up. Bro. Absolutely true. That's straight, straight up. up. Yeah. Let's get this right quick. Um, no. Don't mess with the whole fully land. Nah, no, nah. Don't mess. With that, that's why that's why we out here in great boldness, bro. You think, you think I'm scared of these people? I come out here and preach the gospel, man. You know? I'm making videos calling out the wicked, man. Telling these devils, calling them out, accusing them to their face. You're the wicked of the earth and the Lord going to destroy you. You think I'm scared of them, bro? Hell no, man. Because the Lord said, he said, the Lord that is with me is a mighty one. All my persecutors shall fall, bro. I'm not, I'm not afraid of these devils, yo. Straight up. You got to gotta fear the Lord more than you fear anything on this earth, man. All right, this is Sirach chapter 2. I'm going to get one first. Sirach chapter 1 and verse 21, and it reads, I'm, I'm going to get 20 first. It says, the root of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, and the branches thereof are a long life. Right, you want to live? You want eternal life? Fear the Lord. Sirach 1 and 21, the fear of the Lord driveth away sins. When you fear the Lord, you're going to turn away from sin, right? Fear the Lord drives away sin. It drives away sin, and where it is present, it turneth away wrath. Because everything, everything that happens on the face of the earth, you get in a car accident, fucking head gets smashed like a watermelon. Who did that, man? Yahweh, 
Bahashim, y'all was shy did that, yo. You walking down the street and a straight bullet come through and hit you in the neck and you, you choke out because you, you, your lungs can't get oxygen. Who did that, Lord? Who did that? Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. You see? All right? That's the fear of the Lord right there, man. You fear the Lord, you're going to be safe. You don't got to worry about the fear of evil. Hey, that's it. Proverbs, the first chapter, man. You got to have that mindset, bro. Fear the Lord. All right? But, you know, I, 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 I didn't hit. Man, I can go on and on and on and on about this topic. I'm, I'm going to go back to that new covenant, bro. It's a lot here. We'll go to the new covenant, man. All right? Matter of fact, I'm going to get this right quick. Uh, all right, this is, once again, we're we going to, you know what I'm saying, we're going to go off, man. We're going to go off from time to time. It's truth. It's just truth. All right, check this out. This is, um, this is uh, Philippians 3 and 20. It says, for our conversation, and that you go to the word conversation, it means anastrophe in the Greek, which is manner of life, your conduct. It says, for our, con our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jehovah Shai. All right, now check this out. It says, this is part of the New Covenant. Who shall change our vile bodies. So it says, this, this body right here, this flesh is vile. Who shall change our vile bodies, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he also is even able to subdue all things unto himself. So we're gonna get, a, we're gonna, we're gonna take off this, this, this corruptible body and put on an incorruptible body, man. All right. So we're gonna, you know, but we just gotta, we gotta clean that guile up out of our spirit first. All right. Let's get a little bit more. All right. I'm in the book of Hebrews now, chapter ten, and we're gonna read about that, the new covenant in Hebrews, the tenth chapter. All right. Lest we forget Satan and his devices. Yeah. This is Hebrews chapter ten, and verse um. Let's see. Let's lock your bear with me. All right, Hebrews chapter 10, and hang on. Oh, where is it at? Hang on. I, I'm going to get it. Don't worry. I'm going to get it. Here it is. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 16, it says, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. That's it. Plain and simple. See, so he's not, you know, if you're of the elect, he's not going to hold you accountable, man, for, for the sins that you did. But that doesn't mean you keep doing them. Let's, Romans chapter 6, let's get that. It says, it says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Yahweh forbid. All right, so just because we know, you know, Lord's will be that number, you know, that the Lord is going to give us grace, we don't we don't continue in sin because that's guile. All right, that, it says, blessed is the man who's, who's, who there's found no guile in his spirit. Yeah. Right. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. All right, it says. See, we know this truth is. We just got to get it out. Right, right. So Romans 6 and 1, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Right? So, you, you got you to, like I said, man, it's going to come through the hearing of the word, though. You got to take on that spirit of the Lord. And if you don't got it, pray, 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 beg, beg, beg. But, but yeah, the, the, you're right, that spiritual armor. Ephesians 6 chapter, right. All right, this is um, Ezekiel, I think it's Ezekiel chapter 11 that I'm looking for. All right, yep, here it is. Ezekiel chapter 11 and verse, um, Ezekiel chapter 11 and verse 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them afar off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. All right, a little sanctuary. What is a sanctuary? It's a place of peace. You go into a sanctuary, you know, or it's like it's like a, a place where you're safe at. He says, I will be a for sanctuary to them where they are scattered in the children of Israel. It says, Therefore, say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations thereof from thence. So he says, I'm going to gather them, which we're being gathered now, and I'm going to take away all the detestable things and all the abominations. So all of our wickedness can be purged out of us, you see? And we're, that's happening right now. Through the Spirit. Right, through the power and spirit of Yahweh Shai. He's going to put us through that spiritual fire. All right? It says, and they shall come thither. Oh, I just read that. It's lucky. Ezekiel 11 and 20. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart, 
heart out of their flesh and will give them a heart of flesh and they that they may walk in my statutes and keep mine ordinances and do them and they shall be my people and I will be their God all right so he's gonna pull out the iniquity he's gonna give you a new heart all right he's gonna take away the stony heart and he's gonna give you a heart of flesh which is new and, all, and if you think about like a heart that's made of stone it can't be mended it can't be changed right and the heart meaning the mind he's gonna give you a new heart meaning a new mind a flesh which means he can mold it he's gonna he's, he's gonna pour, pour uh pour out the uh purge out the iniquities how is he gonna do that through spiritual fire bro let's get that right quick isaiah chapter 4 and verse 4 all right it's gonna tell you the lord is gonna he's gonna purge out the iniquities of the daughter of zion by the spirit of burning so we're gonna catch some hell on this side oh, yeah. it's part of the game this is isaiah 4 and 4. it says when the lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. All right. Now, what, what is he going to do after that? So after after your purge and your wickedness, and the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. All right. He said, and what, what that 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 pillar of smoke and the, the, uh, the and the fire by night, or the cloud by the day and the fire by night, is the same way he led the children of Israel out of ancient Egypt through the wilderness. So this is meta, this is metaphorical. It's gonna be the same thing. It's, he's just saying, I'm gonna lead my people. I'm gonna clean them up and I'm gonna lead them into the into the kingdom. All right? Because what happened after the wilderness? They inherited the land. All right? Until they went off. True. It says, and there should be a there should be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge. And for a covert from storm and from the rain. So he says, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to take you under my wing. I'm going to protect you. That's what he's saying, all right? Now, check this out. We're, I'm going to get ready to close out soon. Now, you weren't here for it, but the lady said, she said, oh, well, the Lord is coming to get everybody. That's not what the scriptures say. And I'll prove that with two different uh, precepts. We're going to get that and close out. This is Jeremiah chapter 23. Because I told her the people, the saints are here in Babylon the Great. They're not in the land right now. Okay, the Israelites, the biblical Israelites, are here in America, the land of their captivity. They're not, they're not in their land. They're not supposed to go back into their land until the Lord comes. And we're gonna prove that. This is Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 5. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. We read that earlier. All right. Luke chapter 1 and verse 68, that he raised uh, a, a, a horn out of this of salvation out of the house of David, right? He said, I'm gonna raise unto David a righteous branch. And a king, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgments and justice on the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness, because our righteousness is filthy rags, right? So he's going to be called the Lord our righteousness, because we're righteous through his blood, right? It says, therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord. That they shall no more say, the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel, and led the seed of the house of Israel out of the land of the north country, and of all the countries where I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. So he says that's going to happen after the Lord comes. When he comes, then Judah and Israel shall dwell safely and be brought back to their land. All right? And who is he going to deliver? Not everybody up under the sun, but the remnant the elect of his people all right the chosen the chosen we're going to close out with that isaiah chapter 11 all right isaiah, isaiah chapter 11 and verse uh i think 10 i'm gonna start at yeah yeah here it is yep isaiah chapter 11 and verse 10 and in that day there shall be a root of jesse which shall stand for an ensign of the people he's also the household of jesse it's the same lineage yahweh shai which shall stand for an ensign of the people to it shall the gentiles seek and his rest shall be glorious see people don't really understand the bible they say, oh see you say gentiles they don't know that gentiles can also mean israelites who have fallen off from the pathway all right they don't understand that it's not talking about actual heathens it's talking about the israelites that are israelite foreigners that are in the customs of the world all right yeah, they're, they're, they're out of the truth right they're out of the truth they're going to repent and they're going to come back to the lord they're going to seek after the righteousness of yahweh shai all right it says to which of the gentiles seek and it shall come to pass in that day 
that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. The first time was ancient Egypt. He shall set his hand again the second time, all right, to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. So they're going to be scattered all across the world. But we read earlier that they're going to primarily be in the land of the north, which is also known as Babylon the Great, America. So they're, most of them are here, but they're all over the world. It says, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So that's who he's coming to save, the outcast of Israel, the northern kingdom, the Latin tribes, all right, the Native American tribes, and the, the dispersed of Judah, all right, the, the so-called black tribes, from the four corners of the earth. All right, and once again, they can look like anybody. So there's going to be people who look, quote unquote, Chinese, quote unquote, Arab, and they're going to be also the elect as well, because we just read they're in, e they're in Egypt and Elam and Pathros and Cush, all these different nations. So they're going to come out looking like different people, right? But they're all Israelites. Okay, next verse. Now, what's going to happen to other nations? Check this out. It says, The envy also of Ephraim, the northern kingdom, shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. So he read in Ezekiel 37 chapter, he says, I'm going to make them one nation again. So we're not going to no more be the blacks and Latinos. Okay, we're going to all be Israelites as one. You one see? House. One house. Right, one house. All right, now look what they're going to do. It says, but they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west, and they shall spoil them of the east together, and they shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. So meaning we're gonna, the Lord is gonna deliver his people, his elect, all right? He's gonna, he's gonna deliver us from the hand of our enemies. You can read about all the enemies of Psalms 83rd chapter, all right? And then he's gonna put the power in our hands and we're gonna execute justice upon our enemies for everything they've done to us, all right? And that's the gospel. So it all came back around. That's the gospel. Deliverance from our enemies, Babylon the Great, all right? A new covenant and a kingdom. The new covenant, we're not gonna be able to sin anymore. This, this corruptible is going to put on incorruption, all right? We're going to receive crowns from the Lord's hand and inherit the kingdom, and we're going to be allowed to execute justice and vengeance upon those who have devoured us and persecuted us. And that's the gospel, all right? So I'm going to close out with that. Hey, Lord's will. It was edifying. Yep, we're going to turn this way to the east, and we're going to give all praise, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak Wadash. All right, and double honors to the head apostle slash elder bishops of the great millstone who teach and who rule well and who taught me this truth. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith regardless of whether people hear or whether they forbear. All right, until next time, Shalom and abide the ball. All right, Shalom.